We're back after Tea Party voters ousted, I love that word, longtime Republican senators like Utah's Bob Bennett and Alaska's Lisa Murkowski, Washington Post commas Dana Milbank, crunched some numbers to see how their conservative credentials stack up against Republican leaders of the past. Well, it turns out, based on their actual voting records, the American Conservative Union gave Murkowski a 70% rating and Bennett an 84% rating. But look at their company. Bob Dole's lifetime rating was about 82. Same for Howard Baker. What about Jerry Ford, who became the president, 67%? So does the Republican Party have a long-term problem if they keep narrowing the gauge of what's acceptable as a conservative in the short term? Time Magazine's Mark Halpern, who's a genius, who knows everything about politics, and syndicated radio host Michael Spurkanis, who knows the burbs called. Michael, you have been on this since I've known you, which is a long time, that the Republican Party to be a national party, to be a really a, a governing party, if that's what they want, have got to widen their track a bit to include people center-right, not just right. Well, they're not they're not listening to me, and the way that I, I try and lay it out now is that in Orson Welles' terms, there's a planet GOP that is right now the subject of a battle, planet GOP, and you got the rhinos, Republicans in name only, and they are on the run from the IPOs, who are electable in primary only. So Christine O'Donnell is my IPO in chief because I don't think she can ever win a general election in Delaware, and I'll put Governor Palin into the mix. I think she's eminently able to be nominated by the Republican Party. Party, but could never win a general election for the presidency. But Chris, the people who are the IPOs, they like it this way. They're just happy to be rid of the rhinos, and pragmatism is a dirty word. Well, you know, I know about the left better than the right, and there's just as much crap like that on the left. It was called NDC, November Doesn't Count, <laughs> which is exactly like these IPOs. As long as you win the primary, we don't care who wins the general, because we want to control the left. How can you do that IPO and rhino thing without claymation? Seems to me. Know. But what do you think about this? <laughs> is, is it true that people in Delaware, for example, are happy they knocked off Mike Castle and are stuck with Christine O'Dell? There, there are some people, but this is a, the Republicans are going to be able to finesse this through November because there's agreement about beating Obama, about getting control of Congress back. I think everybody's focused on how's the president going to react to the midterms. I think the Republican Party is in just as much danger, maybe more, because this is a problem they have to solve. And I don't. Okay, see what happens when these eight it. guys win? Here are the eight uh, Tea Party Senate nominees, and I think a lot of these people could win. Joe Miller could certainly win a general if he gets there. He, he can be Sharon Angle is, is a point ahead we saw, saw tonight. And Ken Buck is pretty well positioned ahead of Michael Bennett out in Colorado. Mike Lee's going to win in Utah. Rand Paul is ahead out there in, uh, in Kentucky. John Racy's winning, winning right now in West Virginia. Marco Rubio is winning in Florida. Christian O'Donnell is losing badly right now, but that's a pretty good uh, track record among the right wing there. They have a good chance to come to Washington. The question is, what do they want to do? Do they want to get things done, solve the nation's problems, or do they want to keep the Republican Party being a minority party and out of the White House? It's going to be up to Mitch McConnell, John Boehner, and the 2012 presidential candidates to say to that group and Republicans at large, okay, we did a good job. We have put right. down some markers. Now, how do we grow the party, move them more towards the center without sacrificing our principles? It can be done, but it takes the kind of leadership that no Republican is. Okay, here's the here. question, Michael. If the purpose of the Republican Party, they win seven of those eight right-wingers win, those Tea Party people. They're not all right-wingers, but people of the right. These people come in, and all they want to do is reduce the deficit. That is a popular idea. All they want to do is cut taxes. That's a popular idea. How does that hurt the Republican Party, to be blunt? Well, well here's the problem. They can't get it done on their own because I think conventional wisdom is they'll control the House. They're not going to control the Senate. They're certainly not going to control the presidency. The folks at the uh, Pew Research outfit just two weeks ago polled on the question of whether compromise is a virtue. And by I a two-to-one margin, two-to-one margin, Chris, Republicans said absolutely not. We'd rather have elected officials who stand their ground. So those that you've identified are now going to go down to Washington and be responsive to individuals who don't want them to give an inch. What are we headed for? I think we're headed for gridlock from 2010 through people 2012. People want gridlock, according to that poll. The poll you mentioned says people want gridlock. Here's the problem for the Democrats. Suppose the House gets Republican, and everybody's telling me now it's going to go Republican. If that happens, they pass bills like this. 
continue the tax cut for everybody, including the top 2%. Goes to the Senate. It gets slowed down there. Nothing happens. They go to conferences somewhere in the middle. The president signs it. How's that hurt the Republican Party? They've moved the whole country a bit to the right on taxes. On taxes, I don't think it will hurt them. But I think on deficit reduction, for instance, it may well hurt them as well. Well, they come in with a budget that has a lower deficit than the Senate. They go to the Senate. They compromise. Well, the president agrees to it. But they have moved the country well, to the right. Because deficit, meaningful deficit reduction doesn't involve cutting discretionary programs. They're going to have to say some serious things okay. about Social Security, Medicare, and Medicaid. Well, it's I'm be, for that. Well, I'm for looking at that and in the I, long run. And the president's run. going to be for that, too. And he's going to make you gotta look at it in the long offer. run. Maybe not in the short run, but you got to look at it in the long run. Is this, uh, Michael, let's talk about Turkey. It seems to me that all of this is, a, is basically a game of chicken. At some point, it's going to happen. The question put to, uh, to Joe Miller up in Alaska the other day was by, uh, by Chris Wallace. Is Sarah Palin qualified to be president? At some point, out in the public light, with everybody listening, Mitt Romney's going to have to answer that question. Huckabee's got to answer that question. Mitch Daniels got to answer that question. All these off, Chris Christie in New Jersey's got to answer that question. Tom Corbett in Pennsylvania, they're off to answer that question. No matter how many jobs they got and how many offices they won, they got to answer the question. Is Sarah Palin presidential material? And when they whimper out, or they say, you got to be kidding me under their breath, they lose the Tea Party crowd. Is that when the Civil War in the Republican Party occurs? Michael. Yes, and I think it's I th yes, and I think it's already underway. And I sense no compromise from those who are on the right, who call me every day, email me every day. The sort of folks who you saw at that Mike Castle town hall meeting, the woman who shouted out, "I want my country back." That that yeah. mentality is not going to allow any compromise whatsoever. Okay, thanks, guys. Thanks, Mark. Thank thanks for you. coming in. Thank you, Michael. Thank my you. buddy up in Philly.